You might have heard that young people in our country today are not as involved in social issues as they were in past decades. On this show, we'll talk to several of our youth to see just how involved they are. You'll hear what they have to say on Talking with Henrietta, coming up next. I'm Henrietta. Welcome to the show. Some of the major social movements in this country and around the world have been led by young people. One has only to look at the civil rights movement in the 60s with its sit-ins, the Vietnam War protests, the failed Tiananmen Square revolt in China, the Arab Spring, and today's Black Lives Movement to see the impact of the younger generation in spearheading the demand for social change. On this show, I'll speak with two young women who are very involved in the social issues affecting their city. They are Helene Crew and Valeria Ojeda. Both are members of the grassroots organization Youth United for Community Action, also known as Yuka, and both grew up in East Palo Alto. Helena has one of has been one of the core members of Youth United for Community Action for seven months. She is a ninth grader at Oxford Day Academy, a charter school in East Palo Alto. Valeria has been involved with Yuka for four years, and she is a senior youth organizer for the group. Valeria is a 10th grader at Menlo Atherton High School. Well, welcome to the show. Okay. It's a pleasure having you. Now, tell me, uh, Valeria, how did you get involved in social issues and with Yuka? Um, one of the former core members at Yuka um, is my god sister. Uh, she would always talk about the work that Yuka would do, and I would always be really excited to get involved with it. Um, I joined when I was 11, and like I always pressured her. I was like, "Oh, can I go? Like, when will I be able to join?" And then finally, one day, she um, took me to an open house, and that's like that's how I got involved. So you were excited about it when you were 11. Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, four years. Four years ago, yeah. yes. And what about you? I, st I started coming to Yuka up in about at October, and I was really involved with the community in my school. So then I started going to Yuka. My teacher, she recommended it to me, so I thought it was a good opportunity for me to dedicate my time to that place. So yeah. when you say you were involved in the community in your school, mm -hmm. how were you involved? Well, at my school, we were really looking into where East Palo Alto started, when it became a city, and we were looking at all the past things that happened in our community. And so this really made, um, it wanted me to get in the community more, and my school being based off a of social justice campaign, like, it really made me want to get out into the community more. And also on one of our projects, Yuka was um, a program that helped the community, and so I thought it was a good Program. Good idea. So Valeria, you said you were excited about it. Mm -hmm. What what excited you? Um, just being able to help the community, help my community, which um, and I grew up where I grew up. Um, I always wanted to make a change ever since I was uh, as far as I can remember. What kind of change? A positive change. Um, just trying to help the people in my community. Um, Help them how? However, I can help if, like, um, Yuka works on a lot of campaigns, so whatever we're doing there, I try to help the community out that way. Describe a campaign. Um, do you mean, like... One of Yuka's campaigns? Uh, so, like, currently we're working on the housing campaign. Okay. Um, which we talked about um, having a forum 
project okay. uh, that we will be hosting this month. Okay, now before you get into that, um, what excites you about Yuka? Talk more about Yuka. What excites me about Yuka is that there's a lot of open opportunities to help my community and help other communities. So when we're working on a campaign, we'll go out to San Francisco or we'll go to award shows to really network with other people so I could get in touch with other people that can help me be more of a help. In so when you talk about helping the community, helping the community how? Well, in my community, it's had a successful change in gun violence, and so that was one of the most things that I wanted to work on. But also, there's all the other things that had um, came to my mind, such as water and people being displaced from their homes. And I see a lot of homeless people every time I like walk to school. There's a lot of people who like I would really like to help. Sure. Now, when you talk about Yuka working to stop gun violence. Can you talk about uh, what exactly did Yuka do? Well, we didn't we didn't have a gun violence campaign. That's something that I really thought about when I was in middle school, because there was a lot of gun violence by my house, and there's that's one thing that East Palo Alto was known for as a negative thing. Sure. Now, Valeria, you had talked about some of the campaigns. Have you been involved in a campaign? Yeah. Talk about it. What kind of campaign it was, what you did. Um, well, throughout the four years that I've been with Yuka, I worked on a lot of different campaigns, um, such as water campaign, um, education campaigns, and um, just housing campaigns. OK, so can you go into detail a little bit on one of the campaigns? Like, which one interested you the most? The one on water? Um, so I think two summers ago, we had a water campaign, which um, we hosted a forum for. And uh, that campaign was meant for us to educate the community on like the water situation. Um, because we noticed that not many community members knew like, what exactly was going on with water. They just knew that we had a drought. Yeah, so talk about what was going on. Uh, um, what did you, what did the issue involve and, and what did you could do? So what was the campaign about water? Um, we really, we had, we didn't have a lot of water. Um, and The not, city itself didn't have a yeah. lot of water. <coughs> yeah. Why not? Um, I'm not sure exactly why I, uh, right now when we're, um, as we're working on our water campaign, we have a new one we just started. So right now we have a very low incoming water percentage per day. Mm -hmm. So we know that we don't have that. Um, right now we're looking into why we have it because of before um, before East Palo Alto was a city, we're looking into what agreements we made, so right now we're still researching that. Sure, that uh, in terms of water allotment, East Palo Alto was a lot of less water than mm -hmm. neighboring cities, mm -hmm. which meant that there wasn't enough water for development, for new businesses, and, and so now some of that's changed. Yeah. Where they've signed agreements with at least one other city to get more water into mm -hmm. the city. Yes. Were you involved in another campaign? Well, when I came, we were working on the housing campaign, and right now I really like that one mm -hmm. because we have a lot of um, we have a lot of meetings with each other talking about how how is this um, how is housing displacement affecting our city and how is it worse than before? When did it start? And we're really researching a lot, trying to change that. Sure. Now, how many campaigns does Yuka have at one time? Uh, currently, we have two. You have two campaigns. Mm -hmm. How many students involved? Um, we have about six right now. Six students for both campaigns? Uh, yeah. Just six students in general in Yuka. We have, a, we have currently we have some volunteers coming in that help us also. So, so tell me a little bit more about Yuka. Um, do you know how the organization started or how it gets young people involved? Well, I think it was in back in the 1990s. 
where uh, yeah 1994 where a group of um, a group of people of color came together they thought well we need a place to we need a place to um, make our voices heard and so they made a program it started off as do you remember what the name was what do you mean? Um, well then it started off in Los Angeles and then so now it's in East Palo Alto where it's a lot of youth coming together speaking on what they believe and their experience such as I know Valeria I remember her saying that there's a lot of traffic now that mm -hmm. from um, when she goes to school in the morning is very hard to a 15 minute drive turn into like a 40 minute drive so she has to wake up more earlier to get to school. Oh, just to Menlo Atherton, just which Menlo is, Atherton. let's see, what is it, maybe two miles away? And I live, like, really close to Willow Road, so it's, uh, it shouldn't even be, like, a 10-minute drive. It shouldn't be a 10-minute drive, but it takes you, what? 40 minutes. 40 minutes. That's on a lucky day. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So what time does class start? Um, 8.45. 8.45, and you have to leave at what time? 8. 8 o'clock to get to school, which is several miles away, mm -hmm. because there's that much traffic. Yeah. And the traffic has been increasing. A lot, yeah. Yes, yeah, so are you all working on traffic? Yes, well, not too long ago we read a article on a lot of organizations and companies trying to put in a, I think it was a BART or something, and so they were trying to put that coming through East Palo Alto, I'm sure. And so we're, we did a lot of research on that. And sure, so. sure. Now, have you been involved in other campaigns? For example, Helena talked about Redwood City, yeah. what, San Francisco. Were you, did you happen to go to either of those cities for a campaign? Um, well, yeah, I was a part of those too. Tell us about it, what do you remember about it? Um, well, right now, well, I wasn't a part of the San Francisco one. They went down for a meeting um, with, um, who was They were um, water engineers, yeah. so we were researching. Water. That was part of the water campaign? Yes. The water campaign, uh -huh. yeah. Did you go to the Redwood City one? Uh, no. The no? Protests. Oh, the protest. That's a different campaign. What campaign was that one? That one was a housing campaign. And then the water campaign was the San Francisco one. Yeah. Sure. We have a few photos of uh, some of the campaigns, and we can talk about them uh, as soon as the pictures come up. And so what we'll do, we'll, at least until we get some of the pictures coming up, talk about what was it like at a campaign? What does a campaign consist of? For example, when you go to San Francisco, what do you do? So when I first started coming to Yucca, there were mandatory meetings. So right now, for our water campaign, we're having mandatory meetings on there's these days that the water engineers, they come and they choose dates to meet with us. So right now, we made a timeline on really water events that happen in East Palo Alto. And so we're looking at the future goal and the past. And so we're looking at that. And so the water engineers will make help us make you know articles about what's going on and summarize them to get our community informed. Are the water engineers, are these city engineers or is the city working with other companies? These people? Water experts. Yeah, these are, they're like water experts, so they'll tell us where our water comes from, how much water is originally supposed to like cost, and really help us find out why are we getting this much water, is this enough water for us, and help us understand. Uh, if you could, have you been involved in the water yeah. campaign? So if you could make changes, what would you do? I feel like East Palo Alto should have some leftover water because I know a lot of cities, they have at least 16, like at least 0.5 million gallons extra. So I feel like why can't East Palo Alto have extra water? Why are we, why do we have to ask other people for water when we should have enough water. And also, East Palo Alto does not have like um, water like stored um, in case of emergencies. Uh, so I feel like that that would be something that I would want to happen. So, um, what would that involve? Um, 
I'm guessing just meetings with council to see how we can make that happen. Do you have any ideas on how you could make it happen? For example, yes. Well, we've been, we had a meeting, I think, Tuesday, and mm -hmm. so we were brainstorming how can we get more information and what's city council's next move because we just got some water from another city so what's our next move do we are we getting more water are we just resting right now like we want to know what's going on next so we emailed a lot of city members and the city engineer to get some answers now you had a meeting tuesday was that with city officials no that was with that's our weekly meeting. Yeah, we oh, you had a, a weekly meeting. Now, I just got a note. I don't know what the note said, whether we have photos that are available. They're ready. They're ready? Okay, so if we... Now, that one, what's that one? So some of, some of our... Some of the people in our community have been experiencing rent increase. So then we've made posters. $800 rent increases equals greed. So... Um, we know some tenants have been getting a thousand dollar rent increases so that's we went out to protest where did you go Redwood, Redwood City this protest was in Redwood City um, we were invited out to protest with them because we um, a lot of families were getting rent increases and so when you say you were invited out with them who invited you I forgot the name of the... Was it another group? Uh, another youth organization. Uh, another youth... So do you know what happened in, after the protest? No. No, you don't know what happened. But this one, you were, what, on the streets? Is that part of the same protest? Yes, yes. it is. Okay. That's um, another of our core members at Yuga. You were... Were you in front of an apartment? We were in front of the... Um, their office. Oh, the office of what, the real estate company, yeah. the management company? Uh, did they come out? No. No. Had you written them letters? Um, I'm pretty sure the people who hosted it um, did, but we didn't. You have no idea what happened. Now, this is a picture. Is this a picture of one of your meetings? Yeah, it is. Yes. So tell us about that. I think you said, what, there are they... Are there are mandatory meetings? Yes. yes, there are some mandatory meetings that we have to meet, but we usually have our campaign me campaign meetings on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. So we talk about what's our next move. We have um, our first campaign meeting would really be introducing us to what's the problem, and then we'll make a goal, and then we'll start on why, why should people care and who can help us with this and where are we getting our goal from? Sure. Now, the mandatory meetings, you mentioned Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. What times? From 4.30 to 6.30. Mm -hmm. Do all of the students meet from 4.30 to 6.30? Yes. All of them meet. Okay, we can end the slide. And that one? Uh, that's another of our uh, protests, but this one was for housing. Okay. Where did it take place? In East Palo Alto. Okay. When was it? Uh, I think this one was a year ago. And what was it about? What were you protesting? Just housing in general, that we should have fair housing for everyone. You don't think there is fair housing for everybody? What's, what seems to be the problem? We can lose the slide now. Well, we've interviewed, we've, you guys also wrote an article for housing um, in our housing campaign so we talked about we interviewed some tenants that has been experienced housing displacement and rent increases so we found some similarities in them so we found that they both have been in East Palo Alto more than 15 years but they their rent has increased from 2,000 to 3,000 per month um, yeah monthly and like it's been like a short amount of time and so they both they don't they refuse to complain about rent increases or house repairs because they fear that their rents could, will go up more so these are for single-family houses yes mm -hmm. and what would you like to have happen I think this one this one is for Redwood City and so we would want because I think East Palo Alto has rent control so we would like for them. apartments 
Yeah, yep. except single family homes. Yeah. But not single family housing. Yeah. So if uh, the owner of the house wants to raise rents, they could raise rents however much they want to raise them. Pretty much. So why do you think the rents are being raised like that? Um, so there are a lot of um, companies moving into the community and of course uh, people want to live closer to their jobs. Um, and I feel like just because there are m a lot of people um, moving into the communities, like we're slowly getting pushed out. And the people who live there yeah. now are communities of color. Mm -hmm. They're slowly getting pushed out. Yeah. You're gonna say something else? Yeah. Um, so like I've noticed a lot of change in my community that I usually wouldn't see um, like three years ago. For example. Um, you just see a lot of like people I, I just like recognize a lot of people in my community now I just I don't recognize many people in my community um, a lot of my friends have had to move out of the community and move to like Modesto or Fresno like far away to places that they can afford were they living in single-family houses yeah, they, were. they were living in so what happened to their houses uh, they got rented were they were else. renting or did they own them and they were renting they were renting mm -hmm. and they got really high increases yeah, and they slowly got pushed away. And they had to move out of the community. So they were moved to places like Modesto. Did the parents work in East Palo Alto or around East Palo yeah, Alto? They did. So they had to commute back in, the parents. Yeah. But the children, uh, they were attending school in their new city? Uh, yeah, they are. Okay. Did that happen with your friends? With my friends, um, I have an example of my grandpa. He's currently in the process of selling his house, and so that kind of selling. Yeah, he's selling his house, and so that really, because of the work I do at Yuka, that kind of like hit me because there's a lot of people that could have been living in that house, and I feel like the people who are, who would come by it wouldn't treat it as well as he could have get he mm -hmm. could have did, and so I feel like the people that would come there would like give the biggest amount of like rent each month or just give it to somebody else that doesn't really need to have So it. why is he selling his house? He won't tell me. Hmm? He, he won't tell me. <laughs> oh, he won't tell you no. why he's selling his house. Where is he planning to move? Oh, he, he already has a house in Elk Grove. So that's close to Stockton and where Valeria said her friends would move because there's a lot of affordable housing over there. So mm -hmm. that's somewhere where my grandma, grandpa went. So he's planning to sell his house here yes. now and move near Stockton. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, but uh, it's not that he's being forced out. No. He owns the house. Yeah, but like it just, it's a difference in me because I feel like if it was not all these people moving in, then I wouldn't feel like, oh, well, this house will go to somebody who really needs it. I feel like there's people just coming, there's wealthy people coming into the community to be next to these big companies. And I think it was last week I seen in a house, um, a house for sale on the thing, it said that it was close to all these big companies and it was close to Stanford and it was using more of the big companies instead of promoting the small um, companies owned by people of color and they weren't promoting those, they were just promoting the bigger companies. So what can you do about that? We can't really do much, just um, try fighting it. How? Protests. Um, we've done a lot of protests in the past. Who are the protests aimed at? Um, the companies. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, how do you protest a company? And, and what arguments do you use when you're protesting the companies? Um, and these are companies like what? Like Facebook. Facebook. Uh -huh. OK. Um, Amazon. Amazon. Just companies in our community that have moved in. So how are you protesting them? Um, just uh, protesting outside of um, the companies and... What are the demands? Fair housing. And also, and also I know that 
I don't see at these big companies any people of color, any people from my community. I don't see anything like that. And I feel like they could be playing a big role in our community, but I just feel like everything's just going downhill because there's a lot of people struggling more than they used to to find affordable housing. Yeah. So what do you think the companies can do? When you're protesting outside of a company, you want them to do something. Mm -hmm. You want them to change their policies. What do you want them to do? I would want them to give more jobs to people of color in my, in my community and also help out. Like, I know Amazon has a job center at the, at the bottom of its business, and I feel like that helped a lot because now people, if they don't have any direction of where to work because there's like nowhere to work in the community, then they could go there to look for another job, but they have that and I don't see anybody working Sure, there. they would have that outside of the community. These mm -hmm. would be jobs outside of the community, but not necessarily jobs at Amazon. Yeah. Right? You were going to say something? I was going to say exactly what you were saying. Um, just that we get uh, uh, jobs for our community members. I mean, community for so when you go out and protest, do you get any responses? Mm. Attention from the media. I know that, I think Facebook, didn't they give us some money for affordable housing after the fact we had to protest, I think? So oh, $20 million for affordable housing. $20 million for affordable housing? Yes. Do you know where it went? Did it uh, go? Yes, go on. The, um, what's... It's really hard to explain the measures. But you'll have to JLP. start. <laughs> JOP. Well, not too long ago, Yuka has, has passed measures J O N P, and they were for affordable housing. I think it was, who were they taxing? Uh, the landlords. Yeah, landlords of East Palo Alto. Um, and that money that they got from the landlords, then that will go to affordable housing. Yeah, and we recently had a council meeting where we... With the city council? Yeah, yes. Um, at least Palo Alto, uh, so it can be a, a specific tax um, um, for affordable housing. So the money that like, is in that um, ballot, like the measure, measure O, it would um, be specifically for affordable housing in the community. So the money would go into a city fund, for or do you know housing. how... how the fund would be used? Um, it would be a fund for affordable housing. To what? Build affordable housing? To um, pay the residents so they could afford to be there? Do you know exactly how the money might be used? Mm. With this, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure where it's to have the money been going, but I know that we just had to go to city council to pass another tax measures to go to affordable housing because I don't I don't think we're sure what the I, w I don't think we're sure where the money is going oh okay that might be something to look up mm -hmm. exactly where the money is going you're protesting mm -hmm. you're asking that the city pass measures put them on the ballot to raise money so you might consider exactly okay we're raising the money where will it be going how will it be spent who will be in charge of it yes right mm -hmm. okay you might also consider when you're protesting outside of um, a residence against a real estate agent or real estate company to find out if the protests had any effect if there were any results right now we're on our campaign meeting, we met with the, some tenants of the the company, the real estate real estate company, and so we've been meeting with them. They haven't got back quite quite yet, but we're definitely meeting with them to see if there is any changes. You're talking about the residents themselves, yes, to see if they had the rent increase, yes, to see if maybe the rent was rolled back. Yeah, or if it has, if it just changed at all. Okay. So what do you think should happen? I mean, I can imagine a landlord would say, well, I own the property. Mm -hmm. I'm free to raise the rents, do whatever I want to raise them. Well, so I what would be wrong with that? 
because these are people coming from um, coming from harsh backgrounds such as low income and so this would it's I don't think it's fair to be raising to raise their rent if they already are having hard times in, um, in rent paying their rent right now so why shouldn't why should the person who owns the house care? <laughs> They should care because this is this is not only a community problem. This is going on around the world, and I feel like everyone should help each other, and it should be fair to have a a decent amount of to pay a decent. Well, amount of people rent. would say um, those who own the houses, it's our house. Mm -hmm. If I can get people in to pay more money. What, why should I care about the people who are currently living there if they have a problem paying rent? They can just yes. move someplace else. Suppose they said, that's not my problem. Well, I feel like um, these are people ta we're talking about that come from low income, and if you accept them, accept, accepted them in the house in the first place, then you should stay with that. If they're, these people aren't doing anything to the house, they're just being there, you accepted them for this amount of money, why, why increase it, or why harshly evict them? Um, these are also people who grew up in the community, mm -hmm. um, and they were, they were able to pay the rent for a specific amount of time, and then up to like a couple of years ago, like it just got, well, rent started skyrocketing, and like a lot of people have started to move out of the community, so it's not that they, they will care about like um, people who can't pay the rent anymore, um, but I mean they should. Uh, why should they? They would say it's not their problem. They might say, okay, they've been in the house, we didn't own it at the time, we purchased it from some, somebody else. And so people have a hard time paying the rent. They would say that's not my problem. There's something called uh, what the market will bear, uh, getting what the market will bear. In other words, if people are willing to pay $4,000, why keep somebody in the house who could only pay 1500 or $2,000? Mm -hmm. This is America, and people are entitled to make money. So what would you say? What's wrong with that? I feel like this is where affordable housing money can go, where there will be maybe apartments that can help the community. They're pay, they'll pay this amount each month, and there's a lot of people out there paying a decent amount of money, but then it gets harder when it keeps increasing each month. And you, it's not like you change jobs and get a bigger pay. It's not like that you'll just stay at the same pay, but then your rent is increasing, you have all these other responsibilities. and these. And these um, families are coming from families like um, maybe maybe they have um, well I think they have children so they'll be they have to provide for their children and so it's like it's hard on them but I feel like that's where affordable housing money can go. Yeah, it's obvious that you all care, but what do you say to people who only care about the money? They don't care. What happens? to the people who have to move out. Well, they um, don't care if the people might have to be homeless. Um, a lot of people from this Palo are from low income backgrounds and that like that itself just means that like we don't have the same opportunities that other people would have, which means that like we all can't have like a really good job that pays a lot. Um, like, so they would say, so? That's not my fault. Yeah. So? So that's the problem. Like, we, there, it, like, we're a low-income community, and, like, not a lot of people have, like, the best jobs that, like, pay. And so people might say, well, why don't they go back to school, increase their skills, get better jobs, and make more money? Well, it's confusing for me because back in the, I'm pretty sure like the 1980s, they were bringing a lot of people of color to buy to buy these houses, and all the um, 
they were kicking a lot of people, um, a lot of white people out and saying, oh, we're going to sell your house because there's, they actually, um, and there was like a lot of red line houses. Yeah, that so, might have been maybe in the 50s, 60s. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so then it's like you have all these people, all these people, um, all these people of color in these houses, but then it's like confusing to me because now a lot of people of color are moving out, and so it's... By choice or being forced out? Being forced out. Okay. There is something, a concept called social justice. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the concept? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? Social justice, in my opinion, is everybody being equal, um, everything, at, not everything, but really you can, you're really not struggling with anything and everyone getting along in my eyes, I feel like. Valeria, what do you think? Equality. Mm -hmm. So there would be people who would say life isn't equal, people yeah. aren't equal, you can't make people be equal. So are you pushing for something or wanting something that might not be practical? We were pushing. Would you be pushing perhaps for equal opportunity? Yeah. Well, I feel like there's, with, when you said um, if there's, um, well, you said like if you have more money, somebody willing to pay more money to coming in, then they will choose that. But I feel like people, it's all about somebody's mindset, mindset like comparing e equality to equalness. And so it's like somebody having, somebody having, less money to pay but somebody have more money to pay but it's just them and then the per other person with less money to pay has more children so it's really like it's not i mean <laughs> it's not being um oh no, no no they both pay the same amount of money so that'd be equal because well they have the they have them they have the same amount of money to pay but then there is someone with kids and there's someone with not kids, so that would be the equality part. Where, well, this one person has kids, then how about we let them stay? But it's just somebody's mindset. So when you talk about mindset, what are you talking about? I'm talking about somebody wanting, um, somebody, somebody wanting more money and profit off of these people, but then it's. Yeah, that mindset, or somebody wanting to help the community. How do you get people, or can you, um, if there's something called market economics, where we live in a country that's built on profit and built on companies making as much money as they can, how do you change the mindset or what difference does it make that some people are poor, some people lack housing, some people are homeless, some people go to bad schools or some children? Um, is that a responsibility, everybody's responsibility? No. That so is that the responsibility of the companies that are making the money? or that want to make as much money as possible? Hmm? No. You're protesting a company's policies in the community. What argument do you give them for changing their policies? Well, when we protest, we ask for jobs for our community. You're asking for jobs for the community. Yeah. And if people, if the people in the company say, well, we can't find qualified people to fill the jobs, mm -hmm. what then would you say? Well, also I feel like with that then, I feel, why are you in the community when that space could have been dedicated to a better school or having, really helping the community in 
being better, but then again, you, you have a point of why should I care? Why should I help this community? Yes, exactly. And so it's really a place where I know where some schools in my community, they're not, they're not really, they're not, they're teaching kids the basics, but they're not teaching kids about the community and what's really going on in, around them. So everybody just has, they don't just, they don't care, but where we are coming from, we just want to educate our community and tell them what's going on in our community so they can have an open eye and fight back to actually open their eyes and see where they can learn more about this and they can fight for their housing, what we're trying to do. But it's all, if it's only, we feel like we can persuade the community to help us do this, such as if you're getting, your if your rent is increasing, come to us and we can, we could take you to all these different, um, all these different, we work with a lot of organizations that fight that. And so, so what you're saying, I'm sorry, you were going to say something else? Oh, so like we, ha we have a toolkit made with the Community Legal Services in East Palo Alto, which talks about preventing displacement and promoting, um, promoting affordable housing. So like that's one place that people, we direct people who open, us to, open up to us and help, help, help us help them. So what you're saying is it's the responsibility of the people in the community to inform themselves of what the issues are, to inform themselves in terms of what their rights are, yes. and to seek help. Yes. So how do you get people to assume that responsibility? We're talking about the companies caring. How then do you get the people themselves to care? about what's going on around them. Do you know, um, can you talk more about the, like the handles in the, for the housing campaign? Um, I don't think that wasn't a part of that, that meeting. Well, it's like, can you repeat your question? How do you go out to community members and convince them that they should take an active role in what's going on in the community and work with you to bring about the changes or to keep what you feel is important in the community. We keep them informed with what's happening and that way like like I mentioned earlier not many people know about the issues going on in the community so how are they supposed to like be like well this isn't fair you know, um, so I think we would start by like getting the community informed, and then that's when people are going to be like, like we need to do something about it. And we also held a um, Yuka has held a lot of organization workshops where we went into the community and worked with people who came out. We've had a lot of workshops, and people have came out to those and wanted to help on a lot of our campaigns and so that's one way we we can um, we get the community's attention is really outreaching and seeing if they want to be a part of this and we get a lot of people so you're having a housing forum coming up yeah we are. tell me about the housing forum um, so this was part of one of this is one of your campaigns yes. yes how did you come up with the idea of a housing forum um, well, whenever you think about displacement, you hear how it affects adults. And we looked into it a little more and we like we were like, why don't we talk about the like what the youth are experiencing? Um, so we thought about a panel to host at the forum um, where we will have um, youth who have been displaced talk about like their experience with it because I think it's very important to also focus on how it affects the, the youth and not only the adults. So how does it affect the youth? Uh, it causes a lot of stress. Um, a lot, like I, I personally have been displaced. And um, what does that mean to be d displaced? They only give you a couple of months to move out and they don't care if like you can't find a home, like you're out. 
And I feel like that's another reason because you were just asking us how do we get over displacement. We're still working on that, and so that's why we have this panel so we can we can um, all come together and see how can we fix this problem, what is the, what are the effects this has this has on us, and so we keep on we keep in contact with a lot of people who know a lot about um, laws and things, so we know that do we have can we change this or is this legal, are they able to do this, and so I feel like the forum we get it we can get in touch with a lot of people going through this and they can help us find a way to help others sure now valeria you said you were displaced yeah um you live you grew up in east palo alto east, and you're still in east um, palo yeah. alto so how were you displaced um i was living at a home for about five years and i think it was last summer um i was we got a notice to move out and it was just, just that the rent was going up or no, they you just, just had to us, move yeah not even a rent increase um they just told us that we had three months to move out and um this is the owner of the house yeah. or the, the owner real estate the the owner yeah um and that affected me like a lot had the house changed hands had it was it under new ownership mm, no it wasn't no 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 so the owner of the house just came to you and said you had to move out? Yeah. Did you all ask why? We did, and um, they just told us that a family member was supposed to move in. And it was a duplex, so they told the same thing to um, our neighbors as well. But then a couple months later we went, and like it wasn't even their family. It was just another family like coming in. Paying more money? Or? Paying more money. So you said it affected you. How did it affect you? Um, it just caused a lot of stress. I was worried for my family and like um, if we had to move out of the community because I personally would never want to move out, like not, not just yet move out of the community because that's where I grew up. Um, and I was like scared that I would have had to move out to like Modesto or Fresno and even to this day my dad like um, it's really difficult for my parents to pay rent um, just because it's like really high um, and, like they've been looking in, uh, into like houses farther than Fresno and it's just like to this day it's just really stressful because you never know when you get you know a, a letter saying that you have to move out. So when you got the letter saying or when the owner approached you telling the family you had to move out in three months. Did you have problems finding another place? Did you move yeah. into another house? Did you move into an apartment? Where did you move? Um, we did have a lot, like a, we struggled a lot with finding a new place. Um, I think we found a new place a week before we were supposed to move out. Um, and luckily, it was still in East Palo Alto, just like a thousand dollars more than we usually paid. It was a thousand dollars more than we usually paid. Yeah. Um, How big a family are you in? Uh, six. Six of you. What? Four children. Uh, it's my parents, me, my brother, my sister, and my nephew. Yeah. So, did you find a place big enough? Mm, sort of, yeah. And you had to sign a lease. Mm -hmm. What kind of lease? Just, I'm not sure exactly which one it was. My dad, like, keeps track of all that. So was it an apartment or was it a house? It was a house. It's a house. It, it's, a house. it's a house. So when you talk about how displacement affects young people, what do you expect to come out of that? People being aware of, like, how it affects youth. Um, me, like, it might not make... A, a really huge change, but it would be really helpful for people to hear like what the youth are going through, what they think, or like how how it affects them. What are you hoping might come out of it? I feel like at this forum, if it's different organizations coming out from different communities, such as Pescadero, our foster city, and East Penland Park in Redwood City, I feel like if we all come together and we speak on this topic, we can all find a way. And a lot of people say youth are powerful, and yeah. so that and that we have a voice, and I feel like we should use it in ways that um, that can help.
So we have um, um, a photo of the housing forum. Mm -hmm. And so while the crew is pulling up the photo of the housing forum, tell us more about it. Where is it taking place? This will be taking place at the Kepler's bookstore in Menlo Park at 7 o'clock. And there will be um, many different youth from different backgrounds where, we, where they'll say they'll tell their experience and we'll be able to ask them questions and there will be a lot of there will be an audience that probably will have um, have experienced that but they'll also tell their stories if, so it's really a place where everyone can talk on this topic and what date is it on the 23rd uh, May 23rd at the Kepler's bookstore you said it, we have a a uh, flyer uh, at 7 p.m. Yes. And you said there are youth coming from all over, Pescadero. Yeah. Foster City. Foster City. East Menlo Park and Redwood City. So are these youth who are, you said some of them were displaced themselves. Yes. Are they activists? Are they organizers? Or So one of our, actually one of our, um, other core members. He's at, he's recently recently been displaced out of his house. Luckily found he luckily found a um he found an apartment on Woodside in Robo City. So he and his family. Yes, and it was such short notice. And he's been he hasn't been in, in Yucca for a long time. He's just started coming back now that he found a house. But that's another way it can affect us is we lose out lose a lot of time and after school activities. Did he have to change schools? No. But it's, it takes him longer to get to school now. So what do you hope to come out of the forum? You can, you can get together, you can sit, you can talk, you can exchange stories, and there is a point where there has to be some action yes. taken and something that you expect. So, so what kind of action are you expecting to ex take or be taken? We're expecting, I know that we talked about getting an email list with everybody who participated and everybody who wants to make a change will ha we will have <coughs> meetings I think each month about this topic and they'll help us on our housing campaign on how we can help the community and get more ideas. So are there any changes in laws that you might want to see made? Um, rent control of for single family homes. Um, there isn't rent control now, rent control laws and affecting single family homes? No, it's just for other homes, not single, it doesn't apply for single family just homes. Just apartments? Yeah. And okay. So you know, I've heard people in real estate or real estate agents or owners say that having rent control um, slows up having affordable housing because the owners of the, the real estate or the apartments need to make money that they can then reinvest in building other uh, apartments and other homes. And if they're stopped from making money, then they're not able to rent out the new places uh, at the market value. And what would you say to that? Well, that is something I would have to research. I don't know a lot about that, but I think, Filler. I would say that that would all take a lot, like that would take time. And as time goes by, like families are being displaced. So I feel like we should apply a law right now to try to, to, try to save families who are still trying to stay in the community. Are you asking the city council to do anything? Yes. Well, can you talk more about, did we already talk about the city council meeting we went to? Yes, we did. And so, like, we're asking to pass some taxes on large companies to go to affordable housing. To I feel, I feel like that should go to building apartments instead of office buildings mm -hmm. and more. What about on the state level? Are you in touch with any of your state legislators? No, not that I know of. There is, what's the law, Costa Hawkins? Yes. Yeah. And what's that about, do you know? Oh, rent control. It's about rent control. Um, how does it affect rent control? Um, 
Well, we currently, like, we're trying to have cost allocations applied to um, single-family homes, but we're not sure if that can happen. I've heard some people say to have the law repealed, mm -hmm. that it, um, so you're saying you want to have it apply to single-family homes so that um, there wouldn't be any increases for those who are renting out mm -hmm. their single-family homes. So what more do you think viewers should know in terms of what you're doing, what Yuka is doing, the housing forum, or anything else you think is important? I feel like they should know this is a, there's not only a community problem, this is worldwide, and that there's a lot of people going through this, and that people really work hard to pay their bills and everything on time, but then there's like little things that happen, such as rent increases and evictions that just get in the way. And um, I feel like if everybody comes together, we can change the mindsets of people or we can come up with something, we can get, get some ideas of how to stop this problem. Valeria, do you have anything you'd like to say about it? I agree with Ine. We should all be aware of like everything that's going on in the community, try to make a change while we still can. Um, we should all be involved with something in the community. So when you say while well, you still can? While well, we still have community members at the community. Because how, like, the rate that people are being displaced is just really high. And if you could talk to real estate developers or real estate companies, what would you tell them? Well, we've been having meetings um, where we're, we were, we're comparing real estate agents and the landlords, and we've been looking at what they do. And I'd say, you know, there are people in need to, they're really working hard. It's not like they just don't want to pay, pay their bills, and they're working hard to pay, the, pay these bills. But when you have something out of, blue, out of the blue, like rent increases, it really makes it harder for people. So you think, um, do you think there's enough caring on all sides? No. no. I feel like that's why we have to inform our community too, so they have knowledge about this, because I know there's some people in our community that really, that they could do more in the community, but... And this is also why we have protests, not only to get the attention of um, the companies, but also to get more people and more people from the community. Valeria, involved. thank you very much. Uh, Na, Na, <laughs> thank you. I very much appreciate your coming to share with us, and we'll see just how many people you might get involved. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having us.